Hi, this is Dave and welcome to To The Table, a series of videos where I review and discuss various board and card games, looking at them from a family perspective. Today we're going to be taking a look at Dark Horse from Nightworks Games. Now this is a dice worker placement game for one to four players set in the Wild West in which you're attempting to gain influence and expand your territory in an attempt to gain victory points. Let's take a look at this game, how it's played, and I'll come back and I'll give you my thoughts. Okay, let's take a look at the components that come in Dark Horse, and I have the game already set up here for uh, two players according to the rules that are in the rule book. And so we have here um, the game board itself with all of the action is going to be taking place in the center here. This is a hex grid map here. And along the side here we have an influence track that players are going to keep track of their influence on. And also you have this game end tile that you'll be able to place here um, and you'll be able to uh, adjust one of the ways that the game can end by influence. Um, you can make the, it starting at 11 is what the rules suggest, but you can make it longer or shorter depending on where you want to place this. Along the top and the side of the game board are going to be a, your um, action spaces where you will be able to assign dice and be able to take specific actions or abilities. So uh, we'll get to that during the gameplay. There's also going to be a number of these tiles that come in the game here and they're two-sided so face side down is going to be the uh, look like the terrain on the map and then face up is going to be a particular resource that that space can generate here. And some of them are going to say rugged on them and they're going to indicate rugged terrain and so they're going to have an additional ore cost in order to build something on that particular space. Okay, next there are going to be player pieces for up to four players. And so we have, um, each one is going to have uh, some cities. And they're going to have some town buildings here. They're also going to have some player discs here, which I already have on the game board here. One is going to be used to determine turn order and the other is going to keep track of influence. There's going to be this player pawn that is going to be able to be used in one of the uh, rule variants. So you have that piece. And then there's going to be some dice that come for each player. And I have two in my hand and there's one up here above the hired hand space. And most of the time you're going to be using two, but you will be able to gain a third die there. And I'll get to that during the gameplay. Uh, there's going to be some reference cards for each player and that's going to be able to explain what all of the different resources are and then there's some notes here and what some of the actions mean on the front and back of the card so very very useful to have towards you. Next there's going to be some character cards that are optional to be used and uh, so you can play uh, the role of the designer himself Don Lloyd or um, some of the other people that were involved in the project and uh, or you can play some of the uh, more popular game reviewers here Lance Meister the Undead Viking or Tom Vassell here and so these are optional that they can be used during the game and uh, there's also going to be some action cards that come in this game and there's going to be some that are going to be actions and some that are going to be events that are going to take place. For example, here is an event here. It says Winds of Change. And so if something is going to affect a specific space, you have this event tile that you'd be able to place over that particular thing. So for example, if there was something that had to do with uh, that particular space there, you put it around it and it's going to remind you that there is a, an, a card that is affecting that one. So they have that there. Whole bunch of resource pieces off to the side here. There's going to be some rails here that you're going to be using to construct a rail system during this game. And there's three main resources that you're going to be um, getting and you'll be keeping track of here. We have ore, wood, and food. And then also we have gold here. So we have that as an additional resource, but uh, not quite as uh, plentiful as the other three. Next, there's also going to be some additional pieces on the board here we have like these these deed cards here uh, these tiles are going to allow you to modify dice that you'll be able to get and we also have these wild die tokens here that are going to allow you to have re-rolls or modified dice we have this engineer token that's going to allow you to share space with uh, something else and then we have a couple of roles here that are important we have the mayor and the sheriff and so they come with special abilities and you'll take their specific um, tokens with them. For example, here the mayor has the key to the city. The sheriff has 
his badge as well as his uh, shiny deputy die here. And we have some uh, broker certificates here that come with the game. So we've got lots and lots of pieces here. Uh, my copy of the game also came with a uh, mini expansion called The Outlaw. So this gives you even more ways to play. And it also came with this uh, promotional card that can be used as an additional space off to the side here, the Salty Troll. And uh, this pays tribute to 2012 SaltCon. So it's kind of an interesting thing that I'm going to throw out there when I show you how to play the game. And then finally the rule book. There's all sorts of information in here. And in the back there's going to be some uh, game hints for new players as well as uh, some variants here. Uh, you can even play this game solitaire and there's a two-player variant for a gunslinger so lots of different options to play this game all in the rule book all right so uh, now let me get this game uh, set up and I'll show you how to play okay I have the game set up here for two players according to the rules in the rule book here and the first thing that I do is take out all of the uh, plus one rugged ore tiles and I place them off to the side. Next I'm going to grab two of these uh, ore tiles and I'm going to place them face up in these spaces in the center of the board. And next I'm going to take the remaining tiles, I'm going to shuffle them up and I'm going to place them according to this map that is on the, uh, that's in the rule book here. And so for two players uh, these tiles here are essentially going to mark the boundary of the game. So everything at the bottom here is considered out of bounds for a two-player game. So we're going to pretty much be working just in the top half of the game board. Uh, and then we're going to flip up and reveal these two tiles here. So we've got a wood and an ore here. So those are going to be spaces that will generate resources. Uh, next, players are going to place their uh, initial city on the game board and so there's a couple of spaces that are on the game board here and let me zoom in so you can see what we've got going on and uh, they kind of have a looks like a little farmstead marked down there and this is considered like a, a safe zone here and so they recommend this for players that are newer to the game to go ahead and place their city here and if you notice there's already a couple of pre-printed spaces that are on the game board here of which you're going to, you can, if you choose to, uh, place your initial towns there. Now when you build these things, there's going to be specific rules as to where these are going to be placed in the future. But you can only place towns um, on these resource tiles. So for example, here on the other side, we have them placed on the pre-printed space on the game board here. And so each player is going to do that. Um, this one here, since it was already adjacent here and I chose to build, I could flip over this tile and see what it is. And then uh, each player is going to receive their starting resources. They're going to uh, receive um, one wild die token and then one of each of the resources of or food and wood and they're also going to get one rail to start off with and so uh, and you'll be able to place it and the way that the rails are going to be placed are going to be placed along these grid lines here and they have to originate from a city and you're going to branch out then and be able to um, have access to other spaces on the game board itself so we have the game initially set up here have the uh, the uh, little discs here on the start for the influence track and then we had the initial turn order which we rolled off here the purple player is going to be first and then by green let me show you what all of these different spaces are on the game board because it's important because this is going to be determine a lot of things here um, this is a dice worker placement game meaning that we're going to be able to uh, roll dice and we're going to be able to assign them to various spaces on the board so for example here, uh, with the turn order, what we'd be able to do is if we roll the die, and as long as it has a value of three or more, we would be able to claim uh, a turn order space if we wanted to change it. So for example, the first player, if he wanted to keep it there, uh, he could choose to do it. However, if a green player had gone uh, and rolled it and decided to choose it maybe before that, they would be able to switch the turn order placement here. So as long as the die value has a, a three or more you can assign a die there and essentially try to claim turn order space if you want to. 
The next one here we have is the dealer. And this question mark means it could be any die number. So if I roll, I could put a, a one here if I wanted to. And this will immediately allow me to uh, add plus one or minus one to one die, which is going to be another one that may be placed on the board here. Or I can choose to take one of these, um, these loan tokens here. And the loan token, if I flip it over, is going to say take any three resources and then I have to pay back uh, this loan with six resources on or before the game end or I'll lose victory points. So those are we have those there. The next space here, produce resources. As long as we have um, a, a town built on a resource space, uh, we would be able to generate resources. So if I wanted to here... Um, for two players, we can claim that one space only. Um, so if I roll the die here, if it was a one here, if I place it on to um, this particular town here where it's got wood, if I placed one here, I would be able to get a uh, wood resource for any um, any town that I that's on built on wood that is connected at least by rails back to the city. So right now I would be able to get one resource. However, if I placed a die with a value of four or more over here, I would gain an extra wood because of an extra effort. So I would gain two here. So even if I had a whole bunch of uh, towns on wood, I'm only gonna gain one additional resource because of this extra effort. Uh, next we have this pioneer uh, space, which is gonna be a one with any other die with it here. So this has to be a natural one. And that will allow me to draw from the action card deck. I'll draw two of them, and I will keep one and get rid of the other. Uh, and what I would do is if there's an event card, the event card has to be placed right away. Uh, the next space there, if I have uh, a two, it could be either a natural two or it can be uh, a one and a one. It would be the hired hand there, and that will allow me to gain, roll a third die for the next turn. So I'd be able to gain that extra die. Uh, next, we have the politics here. A natural three will allow me to pay, um, we can pay any one resource, and I would be able to get one influence down uh, on the influence track. So uh, any of those three, I can pay either a food or, or wood. Uh, next, if I have a natural four, it would allow me to produce resources on two hex types with the work crew. So that's going to allow me to generate more resources. A natural five is going to be the rail baron here. And up in the uh, space here where there's that four, it says times two. In a four player game, two people would be able to go on there. Otherwise, only one player can occupy a space at a given time. You're going to pay two ore and one food. And they're going to give you two rails, which you'll be able to build uh, immediately. So you'll be able to expand your rail network. Uh, next, we have this uh, builder phase, which again, if there's four players, two people can occupy it, and you can uh, pay the appropriate resources, and you can either build a town or a city. So two food and a wood will give you a town, or one gold and four wood will allow you to build a city. Uh, next, we have the trader, which is going to allow you to pay uh, on either a seven or eight if you're assigning dice. For example, here, if I had a five and either a, a, like a five and a three, I can choose to place this here, and I would be able to pay any four resources, and I'd be able to take one gold, or I can take any two um, other resources. So uh, this will allow me to change up what I have. So if I'm running, if I have a whole bunch of food or wood and I needed ore, this will allow me to get to that particular resource. Next, we have, uh, the engineer space, which is going to allow you to bump up one in the turn order, and then you have a choice of taking either an engineer token or a wild die token. And so if you take the engineer token, it looks like an anvil, and that is going to allow you to um, share a non-restricted action, or I can change a die to any number. So it's going to allow me to modify dice. A uh, really, really powerful thing. And the other one is this wild die token next to it, which is in the blue. And that's going to allow you to re-roll one, two, or three dice, or I can take uh, modify a die by plus or minus one. Next action we have here is the scout, which the scout will allow you to look at any of the face-down uh, tiles that are on the board. So you can look at it and see 
uh, what's going to be there. And then it's also going to allow you to uh, look at cards that are in the action deck and be able to place them back however you want. You can keep one action card, but if there's an event that pops up, you're going to have to play that. Next, the mayor here, this is a restricted space. Um, you, for you have to have 10 and so only one person be able to do that you're going to um, once you become the mayor you will gain one influence you'll take any one resource and you'll take the key to the city and so what that will allow you to do is you'll be able to gain uh, influence on the political track without having to pay a resource for it so as long as you um, have that mayor tile or token that is going to uh, give you that extra benefit the sheriff Okay, so assuming that uh, we leave the turn order the way that it was, purple player is going to be going first and the green player going second, each player will in turn roll their dice and we will look and see what we have and be able to resolve them. So we have a 4 and a 6 for the purple player, a 1 and a 4 for the green player. So the purple player is going to be able to um, assign their die first if they want to. And so what we're going to do, I believe, is we will go over here and place this four here. And now the green uh, player is going to be able to go. And they are uh, kind of don't have as many choices here. We can't place that four there because it is being uh, occupied right now. So I think what we're going to do here is go ahead and place this onto the food here on that one four plus space and back to the purple player here we will go to um, place this one here and uh, we could place this on to oh let's see what we're going to do here Maybe we'll just place this here and we'll just keep this in the turn order. We don't really have anything to do. We don't have enough resources to build. Although I could I could claim this if I wanted to. Even if I can't do it, I could block somebody. So maybe I'm going to do that, assuming that this player, too, is going to try and generate resources to be able to try and build something uh, later on. And so I think what we'll end up doing here is uh, we will just we'll place this here. And uh, we'll take a loan token. So what's going to happen is we're going to immediately take any three resources. And I have to pay him back with six. So the green player is going to start trying to uh, want to uh, be able to build a city, which is going to take some wood. So I think we're going to take three wood. And we'll place them over in front of the player's resource there. So now what happens is once everybody's going to place their die, we're going to resolve them all. So this one we, we've already done. Here, this one um, is going to produce uh, resources. So he's got a town here uh, with, it's going to produce food. So he's going to at least get one, but he'll get plus one now because of this extra effort where he assigned his die. So two food tokens are going to go over to him as well. So this die comes off the board. So we've got these over here. This next one here produce resources on two hex types here. Uh, we're going to look here, we've got um, a wood and a food, so they're going to get one wood, one food down here for their resources, that comes off. And this building space, um, actually I can choose to build, now I have enough. So what I will do is I will spend two food and one wood right here, and I will go ahead and build a town onto this space right here because right now I am, it's next to my city and I can uh, produce, I can, I can build there and have my first city on its space. So this turn is going to be done here. So that's pretty much how each of the turns is going to go, being able to resol resolve uh, certain uh, dice rolls here. Over the course of the game people are going to be able to build their rails out and this is going to uh, allow you access to build. Now I could build a town on here if I wanted to. Uh, this will give me uh, access to that particular space there. I can continue to build out here, build rails as long as um, you know and just now I can be able to uh, when I go to build something here uh, 
This will be a rugged space here. They have these red spaces around them. So it's going to cost me an additional ore, but I'd be able to flip that over now to, to be able to look at it and see what it is. Oh, it's an ore resource. If I wanted to build that, I could choose to. Um, or what I can do is eventually build a new city. And uh, as long as I have a, a rail along one of the sides, I can build a new city here. Now I have access to other spaces. And so uh, we're going to be able to continue doing this. You can actually build your rail system in to tie in with other players. And uh, so the, the way that uh, this is going to continue on the game, uh, we can also do things where you're going to be able to gain influence and move up and down the track. And the game is going to end in one of two ways. Either a player is going to reach the, uh, reach the bottom here, like the game end on the influence track, that's going to cause it. We'll call, count up victory points. Or we're going to be able to place all of our towns and, and uh, cities on the game board here. So it may look something like this, where we have uh, spaces here where uh, maybe we have this one flipped over, we'll have a town here, and we want to try to uh, build up to here. Maybe we have a town, and eventually we'll have some cities that will look like this. So let's just say, for example, here for the sake of this argument here, that's what we have <clears throat> over the course of this game. We've built this up. And so what's going to happen then is we will start um, scoring here and what you will be able to do is each city is worth uh, the number of points of each town that you have connected by rails. So for example here this one is going to be worth one, two, three, um, four points. This one is also going to be worth four points. Actually they're all going to be worth four points a piece so we'll have 12 points because of the way that this rail system is going to be interconnected. If I had tied into uh, another player's uh, rail system I would be able to score additional points. So that's how the scoring is going to go there. Um, again you have a bunch of different abilities that you're going to use during the game but this is uh, essentially how you play uh, dark horse and so uh, again eventually over time you're going to be flipping over uh, this, these different resource tiles being able to see what they are if we have certain events that could have popped up uh, for example here if we had this if we had this card and chose to play it um, for example here we have old Dan Tucker so say take the scout action for free no dice required even if it's been taken draw four cards instead of three and uh, look at two hexes instead of one. So this is kind of a pretty powerful action card and then you would discard it. Uh, we have some event cards here for example here uh, jailbreak it says if a player has the sheriff roll it's removed and now the sheriff auction caught or the sheriff action now costs nine plus so it kind of makes it a little bit weaker and so what you would happen to do for example here now is we would place this event marker around the sheriff space and we just leave the card up so that you'd be able to see what's going on you put it off to the side to show you that there's an event that's in place so just wanted to show you how some of those things work here and then back to my other player here um, at the end of the game I would have to pay back six resources to pay back this loan otherwise I'm going to lose victory points and you have victory points from your gold and a few other different things that are going to help you generate victory points as well and so at the end of the game uh, whoever has the most victory points is the winner All right, let's talk about Dark Horse here. And uh, dice worker placement games are my favorite type of game to play. I've said that in uh, previous videos, and this one does not disappoint. Let's start off with the artwork for this game. Really, really cool cover art here on the box. We've got the train coming. We've got bad guys here, good guys off to the side here. Just kind of gives that whole nice Wild West theme. Got some really, really cool artwork on the uh, different event cards and action cards. So lots of nice artwork there. Uh, Good use of the space on the, the game board here, a nice big area for all the action to take place. And then you also have the influence track with a nice large font that you can see. And then also with the action spaces that are on the board surrounding the other side. Uh, nice, they can easily be seen from anywhere on the table. Uh, the artwork has more of kind of a lot more like earth tones and a lot more. It's not real bright and vibrant, but bright and vibrant would not suit Dark Horse. This kind of has more of like this almost like a dusty 
uh, a dusty feel to it, which is perfect for the Wild West. So really, really cool uh, color scheme for the artwork, and uh, so I like that. This game has a lot of options of things that you can do in it. Um, we've got the character cards. Um, this one I have them back in the package, but these give you additional options to play. So I just showed you a very, very uh, basic game without using the characters, how a turn went, um, you know, showed you how to resolve all the actions, and then I showed you what an expanded uh, territory would look like. But these characters are going to give you additional uh, um, options for um, and abilities here. They're, each one is going to give you different resources to start off with, and then it's also going to have each of them will give you specific abilities that you can use uh, during the game, which is very cool. So it's going to mix up uh, the gameplay uh, when you're playing it. Uh, looking at the gameplay itself. There are, uh, you know, essentially dice worker placement game. You're going to roll your dice, and those are going to generate your workers that you'll be able to place for that turn. And um, unlike some of the other dice worker placement games that are out there, this one is a little tougher for you to be able to claim certain spaces. Uh, uh, some of the other games that are out there, you can use dice modifiers and claim any space, whereas here you have... Um, <clears throat> you have specific roles where you have to have a natural role to get there. So you can't use a, a die modifier to get to it, um, but you can use something to change the die face. So, uh, for example, like the engineer token, you can change the die face to be able to claim it. For I'm talking about like the work crew or the rail baron. But then you have like the mayor and the sheriff, which those are restricted where you have to have a natural combination of dice that are going to add up to 10. So you can't use any die modifications. So, so it's going to make it a little more... Uh, a little more challenging to claim some of the really really powerful spaces so a lot of thought I think was put into that and I really really like that so um, it kind of makes it a little more challenging than games like uh, Kingsburg in order to be able to claim uh, specific spaces now uh, again there's going to be plenty of options in this game of how you're going to be able to assign uh, your workers and you're going to have to weigh that risk there are you going to want to try to um, uh, expend one of your dice to change the turn order. Uh, are you going? Are you desperate for resources? That you're going to have to assign a die to the market. You know, so you've got some some options that are there. Uh, I like the fact in here that there's plenty of op opportunities to uh, gain resources um, and trade them in. So you've got stock tokens, you have loan certificates and things. So that kind of lends to that Western feel. But it's going to allow you to essentially add that debt in there. If you take that loan token out, yeah, you could take three right up front. But remember, you have to pay those six back at the end. Otherwise, you're going to lose a victory point. So um, you're going to have to weigh that risk. Is it better to take those resources up front, you know, and maybe choose not to pay it off and lose a victory point at the end? Or are you going to be, uh, are you going to build up your uh, your territory where you're going to be generating a lot of resources and you can play it, you can pay it back? So you got some really really cool options here. Working with two dice, though, it's tough, and so you're really going to have to make every move count, and so sometimes you're going to have to plan ahead, and if you can, uh, have that, you get a two and, and pick up that higher hand and be able to uh, gain that third die is going to be something that uh, is uh, going to be worthwhile in this game. So, uh, But working with two dice, boy, that's challenging. You've got lots of different spaces that you want to occupy, and once you get over six, you're going to have to use two dice to uh, take that to take that action. So... Uh, really going to have to make every move count here which is good because I, I you know that's it doesn't make the game very very easy now the game is easy to learn and it's easy to play and easy to teach but the strategy is is uh, there's a lot more that's going on in this game which I really really enjoy about this and so it makes it a, a satisfying game uh, you've got these really cool options that are in there for example like the mayor uh, once you have the mayor you have the key to the city and um, so if you want to you can keep trying to roll threes as long as you have it you can gain influence on there um, you know and, and work your way up the influence track and those each influence point uh, each influence point is worth a victory point uh, but again you're expending a die every time that you're doing that so um, is that worth going to be worth the option but it's cool when you have it to be able to play that uh, the sheriff uh, token here is pretty cool. Somebody plays a, a card that uh, has a little jail symbol on there. You can um, you can be immune to those effects. However, um, either one, the mayor or the sheriff, if you do uh, and use an action that's going to be essentially criminal in nature, that's going to have a little jail symbol on there, you choose to play it. 
you're gonna lose those rolls. So it kind of, uh, so it's, it's, so it has this sense of justice that's in there. Even though you're the sheriff, if you, if you go corrupt and you play one of those cards, you're gonna lose that roll. So you're no longer gonna have that benefit. So I, I like that they have that, that mix in there. You know, it's like, so if you get caught for being corrupt, essentially, if you're the mayor and you do something that's gonna put you in jail, you're no longer gonna be the mayor. Uh, if you do something bad, you're no longer going to be the sheriff. So it's going to have kind of like that older, an old time sense of justice that you know the the you know the the good, you, who you thought was the good guy. If they do something bad, they're no longer going to be the good guy anymore. So, uh, so some really cool things there. I love this the deputy die when you're able to use this. You can flip it over, so you have that option. So it's really cool. And the fact that you've got a shiny like chrome looking die that's awesome. Uh, Couple other things that I want to talk about in the game. I didn't get a chance to talk about the like the one promo card, but this is essentially an additional space that you can go on there. So it's a nice little expansion that's on there. And then you know the coming with the there's an additional mini expansion in there with the outlaws, so you can do different things. And then there's some really cool variants that come in this game. So that uh, so you have continued ways to uh, vary how this game is played. And even the solitaire option with this is really cool because there's different scenarios that you can play. So not only can you enjoy this game with a group of friends, but you can also play a very challenging game uh, by yourself when you essentially are moving uh, moving up and down the uh, influence track in order to uh, keep track of your turn. So it's very cool. Now, looking at this game from a family perspective, this is going to be a, a game that is going to really show you uh, about having to make every move count. I think that, uh, you know, again, working with those two dice is going to really kind of uh, make you really have to think about what you're going to do and um, with uh, some of your options that are uh, available to you. And you're going to have to weigh the risk. What am I going to do? So that's going to be the biggest thing with this. Um, and it's also the, the nice thing is with this game is there's not a whole lot of uh, player versus player conflict interaction. I mean, there's certain action cards you're going to play, but you're not playing action cards every turn. So it's not going to be like every turn you're constantly trying to, uh, trying to um, bash each other up. I mean, you're trying to expand your territory, so there's a little bit of area control. But, it's, but again, this is more, has more of a, a Euro feel to it. And uh, so that's so you're going to have more of you're going to be focusing on what you're doing and building your own your own thing, and you're not going to be so worried about what everybody else is doing. I mean, you obviously want to try and make sure you have more points, and you may want to try to uh, tap into their rail system to have access to more cities to score points, which is very very cool too. But uh, overall, this is going to be one where you're going to have to really make you know your decision making skills and and you know again. Um, risk versus reward type thing is really going to show up in Dark Horse. And you get this really cool, um, you know, you've got a really cool Wild Wild West theme, and it's also going to be uh, something that can easily transition uh, game players over. Somebody that might be newer, um, it has kind of like that Settlers of Catan feel. When you look and you start seeing rail systems, it very much reminds you of uh, roads being built, and then you have uh, your cities and, and essentially settlements. Um, here that are going to allow you to generate resources, but it plays out different with the dice worker placement game. So uh, very very cool game. Uh, again, you know this is just something that that's very 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 enjoyable. Like I said, I love dice worker placement games. I really really like this one. This is going to uh, be seeing a lot of a lot of action uh, with me. Uh, this one is easily uh, able to be taught, so I can bring this out and teach this to new players and uh, just something that's really worth you uh, picking up and adding to your library. So this is uh, Dark Horse from Nightworks Games. All right, that's it for now, and join me again next time as we take a look at another game and we see how it makes it to the table.